argue that dog training by design attracts neurodivergent people, particularly those with ADHD. Hyperfixations, tons of movement, in the moment challenges, and fast thinking. And if dog training becomes your career, you don't have to sit at a desk all day. Novelty around every turn, it's kind of ideal for a person who struggles to sit still and conform to a traditional work environment. So on the flip side, I'm guessing that if you've clicked on this video, you, like me, sometimes might also struggle with things like getting motivated to train, remembering what to train, remembering where the heck your clicker went, and why is it in the fridge again? And you may also struggle with maintaining behavior because training something new is more fun and much shinier and much more exciting. I'm so excited! I'm so excited! Meanwhile, you've got a trail of partially finished behaviors that you forgot about for now. So today we're going to be talking about ways to approach some of the typical challenges people with ADHD encounter so that you can reach your training goals. I'm also going to discuss creating systems that work for you and your brain, not everyone else's. To be clear, this is what works for me and what works for many of my clients. However, everyone is a little different and you will likely modify these strategies to work best for you. There's no one right way. And be sure to stay till the end of the video because I might have to just drop an extra special 11th training hack in there as well. Turn it up to 11. And big shout out to my Patreon members, Ari and Melody, who gave me the idea for this video from one of our monthly live Q and A's. My Doggy You community members financially support the channel and are the reason I'm able to get these videos out to you every single week. So thank you for so much for your support. And if you want to get access to my archive of over 150 videos that are only available on Patreon, as well as get your questions answered at our monthly live Q&A, join us at the link in the description below. There's even a free option, so be sure to check it out. All right, let's get to it. One, have duplicates of everything. Have multiples of your most important training equipment like clickers, treat pouches, and leashes. When I was always losing my clickers, I went ahead and bought a hundred of them, literally. And then I put them in all of the places I needed them, my car, my mudroom, office, basement. That and having multiple treat pouches with shelf-stable treats made it easy for me to train and I didn't waste time looking all over the house where I might've stashed my one treat pouch. I also leave my equipment out on purpose which my husband absolutely loves. Because when it's in my visual field, training is a lot more likely to happen. Two, listen while you walk. Listen to dog training audiobooks or your favorite dog podcast while out on a walk with your dogs. Be sure to use safe headphones that allow you to hear what's going on around you. Sitting down to read dog training books can be tough, but being as informed and educated as possible about dog training is also important. For me, I'm already going to be walking my dogs daily, so listening to training podcasts and books keeps me in the game while keeping my feet busy so my mind can focus. You can also listen to my monthly Patreon live Q&A this way via YouTube. Listening to a couple podcasts a week also keeps dog training front of mind. Number three, kiss. Keep it simple, silly. Keep it simple, stupid. Great advice. Hurts my feelings every time. It's common for trainers to recommend detailed record keeping on each training session to get the most out of your training. While this is a great way for people to be consistent and have data to back up their training, it isn't a strategy that works well for me and can in fact feel aversive and prevent me from training at all. I mean, even thinking about it right now makes me feel like shutting down. Shut down, shut down immediately. I've tried really hard to do it and it just doesn't work for me. So my advice here, don't put pressure on yourself to track your training in great detail. For me, paper forms and spreadsheets that are complicated don't work. Here's what I do instead. I write down a behavior I'm training and I write down the cues for it, both the physical and the verbal. That's it. And if I'm feeling particularly studious, I might write down where I'm at in the training, but honestly, that's just aspirational record keeping and it's not something I'm capable of sticking with. But writing down something that I've started and what the cues are or what they'll eventually be helps me keep my cues straight and it gives me a working list to train from. Four, video yourself. Paper trails can be painful, but videotaping is a lot quicker and easier and can offer more information. You don't have to do anything with those videos, but they're there if you want them. That's the way I choose to keep a record of my training. Videoing my sessions and reviewing them every so often gives me great information about how to troubleshoot a behavior when I'm experiencing challenges. I just watch them back at two times speed until I find what I'm looking for. Five, put it on the board. Let's just put it on the board. Pick three things you're working on that week and just write them on a whiteboard or a post-it note in the room where you're frequently training with your dog. This strategy keeps them top of mind and in your visual environment. And if you change them every week, they can become shiny and new again, which is always good. 
Using this strategy, if you only train for three minutes a day, you can spend one minute on each of these things and have progressed those behaviors over the week. Then you can choose to keep those behaviors for a week or two or switch them up. Six, use novelty to create consistency. A common problem is just general boredom of the same training routine. For this, I like to create novelty, which benefits my brain and also teaches your dog that novel stimuli is the norm, which is great for distraction proofing. We can create novelty for ourselves by training wearing a costume or a silly hat, training with a friend or other trainer, training in a new location, adding training into your daily walk, playing different noises while training, putting your behaviors on note cards and picking three note cards out of the bunch to practice on that day, or taking a new class that uses some of our known skills like cross training or a sports class. Seven, automate. In the service dog world, we need to maintain behaviors for dogs even if they're needed less frequently. For example, they need to be comfortable with subways and airports so that the dogs are ready when those situations arise. There are several situations that aren't part of my daily life, so I have to be proactive in seeking them out to maintain my dog's comfort in those instances as well. Take airports, for instance. I might want to have a training session there at least once a quarter to maintain the dog's skills. To remember this, I have a system. I make a quarterly first of the month calendar reminder for the environment I want to practice in that will pop up on my phone. Once it pops up there, I schedule it into my calendar for a specific day and time that fits my schedule. If I need additional accountability, I might ask a friend to come along. This system works for things I want to sprinkle into my training, but maybe only on a monthly, weekly, or quarterly basis. And if you're liking this video so far, do me a big favor and head on down and boop that like button. Doing so lets me know that you're getting value from this video and want me to make more. Cool Whip Jake and I would be so grateful. Eight, splitting. Break tasks down into manageable chunks. Knowing how many steps it takes to train a thing can be absolutely overwhelming. So instead of thinking about all the steps, I think about the one next step I need to do. Train that for two minutes and then worry about the step after that tomorrow. Splitting is just as important for us as it is for our dogs. So be a splitter, not a lumper. Nine, dabble. I dabble. Don't put pressure on yourself to pick one thing and stick with it. I won't do it. Maybe you will, but I won't. I thrive on the novel and I give myself permission to take six months of agility and then move on to something new when it no longer suits me. I've done everything from herding to barn hunt to shed hunt to competition obedience. I've learned valuable things at every one of those endeavors and when I'm ready to move on, I do. No guilt here. 10, create milestones. Motivation. In the past, I wasn't really into dog sports or titles because I'm not competitive by nature. But recently I realized that working towards titles helped give me structure for my training and goals to work towards. And that helped me stay excited about something for longer. So I do that now as a way to progress my training and keep me motivated. If adding letters after your dog's name or a flashy ribbon to hang on your wall gives you a dopamine rush, well, Go for it. There's certainly worse things you could be doing with your time. So that was 10, but I want to talk about one bonus one, and that's number 11. Listen to yourself. Give yourself permission to not train and go for a walk with your dog instead. Walking is good for my dog, but it's also a management strategy for me and the way that my brain and body works. When I don't walk, my legs get twitchy and my brain gets scattered and my body feels like it's on fire. None of those feelings are conducive to doing static training exercises. If you need to walk and not train, then walk. Maybe throw in a minute or two of training during the walk if you want, but give yourself permission to fit training into your life and not to try to squeeze your life into the training box that others have designed for you. Listen to yourself, you've got this. I hope this video has given you some ideas to help keep you on track towards your training goals. If you have other strategies you use to keep your training on track, please put them down in the comments so that you can help other viewers of this video. And if you like this video, the algorithm says you're gonna love this one too. So be sure to click on it now so you don't miss out on some more dog training knowledge. You all have an awesome day and happy training.